Hi everyone, in this new video today we're gonna start to create a 2D Metroidvania. This is the start of a new series that I'm gonna make on this channel that is like uh, gonna take from February to March to be uh, fully released uh, and we're gonna make a 2D Metroidvania from scratch using Godot for the 2. So in this series today what we're gonna see is how we can create the player and its animation. The asset is available in the description and uh, you can also find in the description the link for my uh, my game Lone Knight that you can wish this on Steam at the moment which is a 2D Metroidvania that should be released normally this year this time and uh, you can also find my latest course where I am making a 2D RPG with a crafting system, an inventory and a dialogue manager and also in that same course I am making as well an introduction to 3D in Godot 4. So without further ado let's get started. And so I have put the asset that I'm using that I have created actually for that uh, series. I've put it on my HIO, so I will give the link in the description of this video. Uh, and it will be composed of like a simple asset that's gonna look like this. This is just like a test project that I have. We will have like a simple platformer that is quite stylish, uh, but still fairly simple, so it's not like too much. Uh, too much crazy to implement and uh, we will have like a tile set like this with like the ground we will have uh, an enemy we will have also like some doors and stuff and here you can see that there was like a rough of an enemy that i haven't made in the end yet uh, but maybe i will do it in the future who knows and of course as well we're going to use godot so uh, the godot version that i'm using is godot for the 2.1 at the moment and i will put the link of godot engine website in the description as well so the first thing we're going to do now is like to create our project so i'm going to click on go click on new i'm gonna look for a project to put my uh, game on so it's gonna be here for me so i'm gonna select that folder and i'm gonna give my project a name so for me it's gonna be 2d metroidvania underscore uh, one and uh, then here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just click on create folder I'm gonna use for the renderer for one plus. This is the last uh, last for renderer we can use. It supports uh, desktop platform only. Have more fully graphic stuff, etc. I'm just using it this way, so this is better. And so then I can click on create and edit. So now Godot is uh, open and basically here you have the basic of Godot. If you're wondering about the theme, uh, if the color is different for you, that's normal. It's because me, I'm always changing my theme. So for that, you need to go to editor, editor setting, and you need to go to theme. And here, if you want to have the exact same uh, color uh, than mine, you click on base color and you put that X code right here to F to F to F. If you're on Mac, you will not gonna, you're not going to have like the same, same result because the color, the, the color image of uh, macbook is different i've noticed that on my uh, macbook air uh, i have the last macbook air m2 and i've uh, i've just noticed that it was different so that's it so now what we're going to do is we're going to start to uh, import our sprite so my sprites for me are into a folder that is called 2D Metroid series, it's in sprite and so basically if you don't know my uh, my um, uh, asset is going to be exactly the same so you're going to have that folder sprite once you have like uh, unzip the uh, zip file and so the only thing that you need to do is to click and drag it here and it's going to import everything so we're going to go to 2d and here i'm going to create uh, the, our first node which is going to be our character so you can click either here on other node or here on plus this is the exact same thing so here i can cl click on plus for example I can, I can look for a character body 2d which is the type of um, node that we are using for object that we are moving in the game and uh, here that character body 2d i'm going to click on it and i'm going to rename it player uh, that uh, character body 2D is going to have a sprite 2D. I'm going to re-click on my player and then I'm going to click on plus. I'm going to look for a collision shape. It's going to take away the warning that we have here. Uh, on that collision shape now we have that warning that said that we have no shape so we need to give one. So by clicking on it you can go to shape here and uh, you can go to click on empty and then you can choose the one you want. Me I'm going to choose a new capsule shape here, this one. And then we click on player. We need to add an animation player like this. And then click on player we're gonna also create directly our sword uh, area so for that we're gonna use an area 2d uh, it's a node that is used for uh, detecting collision basically in godot that's what it does uh, and then on that area 2d with that area 2d selected we're gonna add a collision shape that collision shape gonna be a rectangle and i'm gonna change the color 
it's just something that I like to do, so like this, it makes things way more uh, easy for me to uh, to see, uh, to, to differentiate, basically, that's what it does. That area 2D, I'm going to rename it uh, Sword, actually Sword with a little S. Uh, the animation player, I'm going to rename it Anim. I'm going to take my Sword, I'm going to just move it to the side like this, so like this I can uh, recognize what is what. So now I need to go to my sprite, click on my sprite 2D, here on the player, and here on my sprite folder I need to go to player, and here I'm going to take my player Metroid. So I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drag it here into empty, and here you can see that we have two problems. The first problem is that all the animation of the player are <laughs> just showing at the same time, which is not what I want. And also the second one is like, it's blurry. So let's start, let's tackle first the, the problem of like, just uh, displaying one segment of the sprite sheet. So for that, my sprite sheet has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the, um, the uh, horizontal axis. So I need to go here with my sprite to be selected. I need to go to animation, eight frames so horizontal frame. I need to put it at eight. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's that. So on the vertical frame, I need to put seven. So now I have my uh, a sprite sheet that display only one image. So that's cool. So now we need to uh, go for the for fixing the blurriness of our uh, sprite sheet. So for that we need to go to project, project setting, and I'm gonna go to uh, texture right here into rendering, and I'm gonna go here default text feature, and instead of linear I'm gonna put nearest, and then you can see that now my pixel art is crisp. Perfect. So now I just need to adjust my collision shape. So I need to go to my collision shape here. I'm going to adjust it like this. And I'm going to just go to the select mode right here. And I'm just going to make it so it covers a bit my character, but not too much. Because I just want to have my character being able to collide with specific things, but I don't want to collide with everything. So now, like this, this is good. And if you're wondering what my extent are, if you click here, my extent are 6 for the radius and 22 for the height. So now that this is done, we're going to be in need to create the animation. So for creating the animation, we need to go here to animation. If you don't see that tab, you can click here or you can click here. It's going to show that tab. You can click on animation and my animation has quite a lot of, uh, of things. So I'm going to click here on new and I'm going to uh, say I'm the first animation going to be idle. Then I'm going to click on animation new. I'm going to have walk. Then animation new. I'm going to have jump. Animation new. I'm going to have fall animation new then we're going to create the swell animation swell with a capital s animation new we're going to have dead and then what do i miss dead for idol jump swirl work i think it's i think we're good for now so i'm going to go to my idol animation because that's the first animation that i have on my sprite sheet and i'm going to go to my sprite 2 d and here i'm going to go to frame and you can see that now next to frame we have a little key that shows that key was is what we're going to use to actually keyframe our animation i'm not using an animated sprite like most of the tutorial makers are doing because i'm using godot since a very long time and animated sprite always had like some some weird issue uh, uh, in the past and I don't like it. I prefer an average Sprite 2D. I also prefer Sprite 2D because it's way easier to maintain if you want to make modification uh, in the future to your to your graphics. Like for example, you want to change some stuff, you just have to um, re-import your, uh, your, your Sprite 2D. You don't even have even to re-import your Sprite 2D. You can just modify it through a Sprite. I can go here. I can just like open that, uh, that file into a Sprite and then I can modify it and the modification will be applied automatically. Where with animated Sprite, you have to slide stuff. I don't like it. So I use a Sprite 2D for that reason specifically. Uh, so uh, now in that idle animation, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to keyframe. So here I am on frame zero. I'm going to click on the key icon. It's going to ask me if I want to create a new track. I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to remove the reset track because I don't need it. I'm going to click on create. And then here I'm going to click again on frame. And normally here, that's the annoying part in, in Godot where it, for some reason, that part here, it doubled it. So here I just need to go to two and then it's going to automatically remake the uh, it's gonna continue if i you're gonna uh, automatically move to the next frame so here i'm gonna click on dot five because that's the uh, length of my animation here and i'm gonna put that animation on loop and so now 
I have my animation that loops. I'm gonna also put that animation on auto load here, so like this, automatically that will be the first animation that my player will be in when we're gonna uh, launch the game. So now we're gonna go to walk, uh, and I'm gonna go back to zero right here, and I'm gonna go to my frame, and so uh, my walk animation started the fifth one, so I'm gonna go here, click, create, create, like this. And so that animation normally is around one second. Voilà, I think it's around that. Ah, I, have, I think I have another one. Up, voilà. So now I can put that animation on loop and I don't need to change the time because it's one and it's one second. Yes, voila. So that's cool. Uh, so now I can go to my jump. I go back to zero right here. I can also just uh, change the length of the animation player here like that by just toggling that uh, that little handle right here. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna put my uh, my 15 uh, frame as the jump. It's gonna be just uh, it's just gonna have this one as a um, as a as an animation. Then I'm gonna go to full. I'm gonna put myself back to zero. I'm gonna go to my 16th one like this. I'm gonna also put it at dot one like that. I just want to make sure that my work is on a loop. That's the case, so that's cool. So now we have what? We have our sword. So the sword here is on this one normally. Yeah, voila, it's on 17th. So you need to click on the plus, create, and then 18, 19, 20. So that's good. So here I'm just gonna put dot four. I'm not gonna put this one on loop because I don't want this one to loop. But I just want to make sure that my animation is played nicely. Okay, that's good. And here on Swear we have different animation. Uh, I've made already different animation for that uh, specific thing. Let me find if I can find it back. Player Metroid. So you can see that here I have like that animation, but I have also another one. This is if we want to make combo uh, combo input. That's something I'm, I'm gonna do in the future. Not right now, but like so when I will make it in the future, I will create those animation as well. So now we're gonna go to Dead. And uh, now here we're just gonna set up our dead animation. So my uh, dead animation is around two seconds. So I'm gonna just change it in the, from one to two here. And I'm just gonna go to my where my animation is. Something like it's this one here. I think it's this one. Oh yeah, that's one. So 34. So I click on plus uh, the, the the keyframe plus create. And then here I can key that. Voilà. Voilà. So now we are normally supposed to be good. Okay. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to launch the animation. Okay. So we are good. So now we can leave it this one like this. Perfect. So now I can just save my player because I didn't save my player up to now. So I'm going to do Control S. And I'm gonna uh, go to my race folder, which is the root folder that I have. And I'm gonna click here on create folder, and I'm gonna uh, create a new folder that I'm gonna call sin actually. And uh, in that sin folder, I'm gonna create another folder that I'm gonna call player. And I'm gonna say my player.tscn in that player folder. So now we are good. So now that we have done all of this, we are ready now to move on to the next uh, video where we're gonna be able to code the player movement and color animation. So we'll see you in the next video. So that's it for this video, I hope it has been helpful for you, if it's the case don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, you can also see my course or my game Lone Knight for wishlist on Steam, and me I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video, bye!